think the experience of, of directing your first feature will then in turn affect the way you write? Well, it had, I, there was actually, um, I, I went, there's a John McCarrick book that I've um, been adapting, um, which actually just started shooting, but I sort of went straight from the editing room into doing a, a rewrite on that, and I hadn't touched it for about a year. Yeah. And um, I cut 20 pages out of it, because I think the whole editing process, you realise how, what I really realise is how, you know, how, how much is unneeded, really, and you, the, 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 in scripts you sort of do set up some things and backstory, and all these things, and, 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 and really that once the film, I sort of realised the most important thing about film sometimes is the momentum, mm -hmm. and that's what you learn in the editing room, that's what I learned in the editing room, is, is that, for example, with this one, um, in early cuts it went from being a, a drama to a thriller, then back to a drama, and, and I sort of, you know, when we tested it with audiences, I sort of found that they weren't happy with that pacing and that sort of momentum, that they were prepared to go from a drama to a thriller, but once it became a thriller, I think they wanted to stay on that sort of rhythm. And I sort of learned from directing, and particularly from being in the editing room, that rhythm is such an important part of screenwriting. Mm. And everyone talks sometimes of three act structures and stuff like that, and I think that can be a, a little bit misleading, because I think it, it, it almost needs to, to, to work in stops and starts, and suddenly speeding up and slowing down, probably closer to a piece of music, I think, than, than a block, block, block way of describing it. Yeah. Um, it's interesting because we before we came in, we were talking about um, uh, Nicholas Winding Refn. He went with, with on Drive and just about you know how he has this incredible bravery in terms of the films that, that he makes, sort of thing. Um, I mean, in terms of this experience for you, uh, did you learn a lot in terms of the business side of things as well, and kind of how I know how you go forward as a screenwriter, but also how you move forward as a director with the next part. Well, sort of the, I mean, the thing I've learned most, and I think that's, that's where someone like Nicholas is really very fortunate, is, 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 is as a director, I think, your, your biggest currency is, is that actors want to work with you. Um, and, and that means more almost than box office or whatever. If, if you're a director and you can get Brad Pitt to be in your movie, then no one's going to stop you. And Brad Pitt says you can direct it, no one's going to stop that happening. I think Nicholas is, in a way, that his courage as a filmmaker means that actors, you know, actors who wouldn't normally be in lower budget films suddenly want to work with him. Mm. And, and I think the thing I learned from him is also, he was, he was incredibly um, collaborative on set with those actors. Uh, and, and it was very much, he was open to other people's opinions and, and, and he knew exactly what he wanted, but it was something that I, I, I sort of tried to do the same thing just in terms of relationships on set, was actually to be, to be, you know, to listen and stuff. Uh, and, and someone like Nicholas, who when you interview him, you think he's very, you know, he knows, you know, he's, he's like the, the sort of master plan has always been there, is actually incredibly fluid uh, while he's filmmaking. Yeah. Um, I'd like to write some questions if any of you guys have some questions. Uh, we have someone with a microphone, so if you could just wait till the microphone gets to you, and then question away. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, my name is Orion, and I was just wondering, um, coming from a story background, were you very cognizant of getting a crew around you who, you know, not only had the technical expertise but would sort of help you with the, you know, the, the shot setups and things like that, or were you very confident in that already? No, I, 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 I sort of. I mean, I, there are a couple of things that I definitely wanted. I wanted, I wanted a. Um, the director of photography who operated um, because I just wanted to really communicate with one person I didn't I didn't want to have to go through a camera operator and a director of photography so that that was one of the things I set out um, and, and then um, I also wanted I sort of wanted a, a little bit of extra time to do the storyboarding so normally I, th I think I mean it probably cost cost the studio quite a lot of money but I, I just um, I just felt that I needed to spend at least six weeks with a storyboard artist and really direct the film in my head. I sort of felt like I directed it when I'd written it. And I sort of wanted to direct it again, sort of with storyboards. And then, and then we didn't really use them when we sort of got on set. Um, but, but the preparation was incredibly important to me. And I think with the, with the DP, it was very much uh, choosing someone. I also wanted to work with, with one camera, not multiple cameras, because I just thought as a first time director, getting my head around three or four cameras going at the same time. We only used it once. We used a multi-camera setup in, in a dialogue scene just because I wanted performances to feel very natural. Yeah. But I didn't. I did. I didn't feel confident going with a multi-camera setup. Um, 
Good evening. Um, my name is Ross. Um, thank you for tonight. And um, basically, you asked, you said that when you first started out, you found out as a director that a lot of people wanted to help you. Yeah. Um, I've also found that I've just started a course. Um, I've been dabbling in performing arts since I was about four. But long story short, um, I found the same response. Um, but what my question is is that was there a stage in your first production or first direction that um, you felt lost? Like you felt, are you? Is this working? Because of, I, I believe I'm going in the right direction. I'm g gathering all the bits that you need, but there's still that sort of, am I there? Am I, am I, is this going to work? Yeah. Does, does that make sense? Sorry. Yeah, no, totally. I mean, I, I had, I probably had, I can remember three or four really dark days and it sort of seems to break up into days, but it was, I mean, and I remember like riding back in, in, in the car with, with my first AD and going, we didn't get that scene and the performance isn't right and, you know, really feeling horrible and low. And then the thing about filmmaking, which is, is the next day you have to get up and shoot another scene. So there isn't really enough time to feel sorry for yourself. And that, that's what I found was, was that, that it was, it was almost, they just took over. There was, you know, and, and, and so the next day went well. So you think back and go, oh, well, the day of like, you know, that I messed up, you know, maybe we can cut around that or something. And, 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 and I never felt, I think probably because I'd written it, I didn't feel lost in terms of answers. Everyone said to me, the thing that's hardest about directing is everyone asks you questions. And I found, I found it absolutely no problem coming up with answers. They weren't necessarily the right answers or the best answers, but I didn't have a problem sort of answering. And I, th I think that's, that was maybe from writing. But, but yeah, I felt lost all the time. I mean, it's, it's, and I felt very lost in the editing room. I found... I found editing really tough because of that thing of going snow blind after seeing the film four or five times. And, and I remember someone saying it'd be great if they could invent a pill where you could forget it. So every time you're sort of watching, you're watching it like an audience is for the first time. But, but I found that sort of pretty depressing that I, I, I almost like stopped using my eyes and had to use my ears because I had to listen to people's opinions and figuring out who's, you know, is that suggestion right? Is that scene worth cutting? Mm. You know, and that, that was the hardest, that was the thing I found. And that's probably when I was most lost, was in the editing room. You need that Greek doctor to make you want Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions for me, guys? Great. Uh, you said that you were concerned about the way the first scene was. Um, you've seen the film now completed. Are you happy with it? Sorry, the first... Um, the first scene on your first day shooting. Oh, well, the first scene was... was, um, was um, it's funny, there's not much... I mean, there's a little bit of it left. It was, it was we were shooting in, in Knossos, and we were just trying to get little bits and pieces of, 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 of the ruins. Um, and we ended up writing, using quite very little of it, really. So, um, but yeah, actually, the first day was, was, was fine. I think that energy, it's sort of... I found around week five, it was eight eight or nine week shoot, I think around week five, six was when, I mean, there's definitely a stage where I think you, you sort of hit nasty weeks. Yeah. Um, on the first day, there's a lot of energy. So yeah, I'm, 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 and what we've kept of that first day, I'm, I'm happy with, yeah. How did you shoot? Did you shoot kind of chronologically or did you? No, kind of... we went, we went, we, we shot geographically. So we went to Crete first, um, then we went to Athens for a week, and then uh, Istanbul, and then finally back to London for the studio stuff. So it was completely out of sequence. How did they on set and studio experience, what was the, how did they differ for you? I, I prefer shooting, I prefer <laughs> shooting on, uh, sorry, not, not on set, I prefer shooting on location. Mm -hmm. I, fa I found something a little bit artificial about the whole set experience. Maybe that's because I'm not very, I wasn't very experienced. Um, I just found, the, the idea of walls that move away and roofs where you don't have, I just, it was something about the reality of, of being on location was, I, I, I found it was easier to get my head around what was going on. That's great. Uh, we've got two questions. Hello. Um, I was just wondering, you said, I don't necessarily think it is, but you said you had sort of a slow start in terms of getting to where you are. Um, what was your kind of path into it? Did you get yourself an agent, or did you start out in a different route? Oh, how did I get into screenwriting? Yeah, yeah screenwriting, it, it did take, I mean, it, it took a long time, and it, it's funny, because one of the differences I've noticed in 
in this country and in, in America. I think in America, if you've never done anything, people are really excited about you. I think in this country, if, if, if you haven't had anything made, then it's really tough to get a break. And it was, it was almost the first, it was, it, there was a, a commissioning entry of the BBC sort of commissioned me to write something, which never got made. But the, the moment I had that one tick, it just made it much easier and to, to sort of be taken seriously. Um, and I think it's a problem here because there is, you know, that, that sense of discovering new talent, I think still needs some work. It isn't the same in America. It's like, if you discover someone, then that's great because you're the person who discovered Paul Thomas Anderson and gave him his first break. But here, there isn't, here there's much more nervousness and I think it makes it much harder to break in. So I just wrote lots and lots of screenplays until one got kind of read and liked. But I must have written eight or nine before that happened. And did you always decide that you wanted to do writing and directing together, or did directing come later? Well, I, I, I sort of at university I'd written and directed a short, but, but what I found pretty quickly was, you know, it took me 20 years to write and direct again. Because I think also the other thing is, I mean, if anyone here is interested in you know, the writing and directing together, I think it's important to do that right from the get-go, because once you become a screenwriter, you're more, you're more sort of valuable to people as just a screenwriter. And there are lots of really talented directors out there, so unless you really, and I didn't really, you know, I was quite happy getting paid, and it was so great to finally have something shot that I sort of almost sort of gave up the directing ambitions and just went into the writing. And, and I love writing, I probably now, now I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy to go and write for other directors. I, I don't suddenly feel that I have to be a writer-director, I and mean, there's a lot of television writing I'd love to do, there's a lot of, you know, writing for directors that I admire, if, they, if, if they're interested, I like, you know. Um. So is it, does it ever work that, um, you know, that you, you go, I mean, how did, how did Drive work, how did, you know, your other screenplays work in terms of how, how they came to be, was, did you, you wrote, you wrote it, took it to, Studio or no, I tell you, I've never. I mean, this, this was the only one. <clears throat> this film was the only one that I've actually sort of. It was a book that I loved and, and tried to convince other people. Usually, it works on a commission basis. So, Drive um, was originally Universal. Um, someone sent me the book, and what happens is, sort of, you know, I tend to do a lot of adaptations. I read the book, and then you pitch for it, and and usually involves at least four or five phone calls, and then going and meeting people and all. But it's, it's almost like a little competition with about five or six writers, and everyone's kind of pitching how they'd adapt it. And, and then, you know, and I've tended to work like that just because I need to financially. I just, I just sort of, you know, it's a job for me as well. So, yeah. it's, to suddenly take six months off and do a spec script, um, it's quite tough because yeah. you're not earning for those six months, and <coughs> it's a bit of a gamble. Yeah. Um, <coughs> We've got, bless you, <laughs> two questions down front. I have to say, I'm very excited about watching this film because Thank you. I met you last year. You took over my editing suite in Mullen Air. Uh, <laughs> Colin introduced us. That's and, right. And uh, I'm very excited about watching this film because I, I remember the one thing that really struck me was how how much you were actually in the editing suite with your editor. It surprised me because I would always go in for two hours and then leave my editor alone before I killed him. Yeah. And uh, I was. Uh, just wanted to know what was going in, on in there, but I was what? too scared to ask. You. No, no, I think, I think actually it's, it's funny because that was that's probably a mis that was a mistake. I, I think I spent um, and I had a really talented um, young editor, but, but ended up having to to work with somebody else because I think we both got so close to it, and I was um, I think I was the monkey on his back the whole time. I was just I was and probably too close, and I think we both went snow blind at the same time. And at some stage, I brought someone else in just because I thought we needed a pair of fresh eyes and stuff. And, and, and that was my own experience, because I think if, if I had kept that distance, it would have probably been be a, a better sort of, it would have worked, been a sort of slightly more fun post-process. We noticed that you spent a lot of, I mean, my crew noticed you spent a lot of hours there. And we were quite, well, we were impressed, but we were also um, uh, found it quite, a lot of hours that you were spending there, and it can be quite exhausting in the process when you're putting a film together. So, just wondering how you got through that. Well, I think it was more the perspective. I mean, what I, what I regret is losing the perspective. I think I think the more time you spend in that editing room, you just start seeing it, and, and, and in a way, and and I, th I think you know what I did with the second editor was was 
I'd do exactly what you did, was I'd go in maybe two hours a day, and, and not even every day. And I just suddenly sort of, I, I fell back in love with the film that I'd actually grown to really hate because I'd just been watching it every day and, and been tormenting this poor first editor. And mm -hmm. Congratulations, I'm really excited. In terms of what you, what you decide to use from, from the original story yeah. and stuff, how, how do you decide that? Is it just kind of, it, you know, because you, 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 there's an element of you, you're, you're writing your own story as well as using someone else's as, as a guidance in a way, I guess? I mean, how do you look at it? I mean, I think the, the, the books that I like adapting the most are the ones that sort of leave leave a space, you know, for me to come in and, yeah. and bring in personal experiences. So, almost like as if they're half adaptations, half originals. And often it's books that are not obvious, obvious adaptations. I think if you're going to adapt to Harry Potter, you have a responsibility to sort of, I think, stay pretty close to what that huge readership is. And, and some of those books are written almost to become films. And I think, but I think what I find interesting is, is, is almost the relationship that I have as a reader to that book and to try to capture not just what's in the book but also my my reactions to it my imagine you know in terms of how i saw that particular bit which bit scared me which bit i flipped through and isn't that interesting to me so all those things i think are, are really an important part of adapting um for me is it just to be able to bring in it, it, it's that very personal relationship i think everyone has with a book when they lie down on the sofa and read yeah I think the great thing about adapting is you get to sort of try to recreate that experience and that emotion. Is it very different for you writing for film and TV? Well, I haven't really done too much TV. Um, I've been watching a lot of TV in sort of preparation because I suddenly find long form TV really <laughs> exciting just in the sense that you can, you can almost like do a, tell a 10 hour movie or a five hour, you know, in a way where I think now with movies, I think, you know, from last year's Oscars, I think, and they come in the length is coming down. Um, and just think to suddenly, like, you know, True Detective or something, the idea that you can explore characters for longer than a certain amount of time. And I, th I think movies also, and one of my favourites is Once Upon a Time in America, and one of the things I loved about that was, was the way you get the sense of time passing. Mm -hmm. And I think you need length in order to do that, and I think in a one and a half hour, two hour film, it's very hard, whereas in a ten-part series or longer, I think you can really create, you know, the effect of time on people and characters and stuff, and that's something I found very interesting. What's next? Um, well, the Le Carre is next, um, and, and, and there's a, the, the, they've just started shooting. It was um, a, uh, I think his book before last called Our Kind of Traitor, uh, and it's with Ewan McGregor and Stellan Skarsgård, I think. It's just started, I think they're halfway through the shoot. Um, but it was quite strange that suddenly, having gone back to writing, I, I felt very, I felt very um, left out in the process. <laughs> <laughs> well, because it's suddenly, suddenly you're, 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 you're no, you know, it's, it's, it's going back to what I've always felt, which is, you know, you, you're slightly superfluous to requirements once, once, the, once the film starts shooting. But I know some directors don't like Nicholas would use me and stuff, but but some directors just want, want the writer yeah. and have the picture. What about the next directing project, if you've got that in mind? I sort of don't, because, because it sort of, it really depends how this does, not just, because I think someone, you know, with writing, I can keep writing, no one can stop me writing, but with, with directing, someone needs to finance it, but I think even more importantly, and it's what I'm realising, is actors need to want to be in your film, so, you know. Pretty good star. Well, yeah, but you <laughs> sort of need to be, you need to be act to bait, I suppose, you know, and, and it sort of really depends how the film does, so. I'd love to do it again, but, but you know, it, it, it was a great experience. If it, if it ends up being the only one or two, so yeah. Very much like it will be. Um, for those of you who haven't seen the film, it is out uh, next Friday. Thank you all so much for coming, for listening, for your ears, for your questions. Thank, thank you. you. So no, much. Thank you, for, thank thank you, you very much. Thank you for coming.